So, September has unfortunately returned once again. Y'all know what that means, right? Well, I know I do. Summer's over, fall starts, my birthday in October, Sparks of Hope releases in that month, then Frontiers comes out, and afterwards, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Ha ha ha. I'm so funny, ain't I? <sighs> What's wrong with me? But yeah, anyway, September's here, which means it's time, well, for you guys, because I just finished, like, not that long ago. Not to brag or anything, but yeah, it's time to go back to everyone's favorite place of all time, school. And by favorite, I mean favorite place that we just want to place a bomb in when nobody's looking and run away so the place can explode and just burn into ashes. <laughs> Gee, not only am I a funny guy, but I'm also a crazy and weird guy, huh? But yeah, school is starting again, unfortunately, and obviously y'all are not looking forward to it, and I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm sure many of you have just started school, or are about to start, or are probably having problems already. I mean, of course you're having problems, because why else would you be watching this video right now? In today's video, I thought I'd take time out of my day to give you guys some advice on what you can do to get past school. Because usually some of the stuff here works for me. Now there's always gonna be that one person that's like, just because some of these things work for you doesn't mean it's gonna work for others. Well then how about you guys come up with your own advice and make a video about it on YouTube because I would love to see that. Plus, I'm trying to help you all here because I'm sure many of you have experienced the same things I've experienced in school as well. Well, except for talking back to the teachers. So anyway, I thought it'd be cool to give you guys several tips on what you can do when you're struggling in school. Reminder, this isn't going to contain any of the do your work, behave, don't bully, be polite, or be prepared jazz because I'm sure many of you are tired of it. I can definitely tell. Instead, I'll give you guys some cooler and relatable advice that I know can at least help somebody. So with no further ado, I present you all to... Joshua Lara's Tips for Freshman High Schoolers and Anybody Starting School. Now let's get started. Roll the intro please. Tip number one, don't be a nerd. Let's start off with something that should be pretty obvious. Nerds are probably the weirdest type of people in this world. Not only the ones who think they know everything and think that they're the best students in the freaking class or anything, but the ones who just sit around by themselves with no one to talk to. It just really pains me to see those kind of people. Honestly, being a nerd is definitely not really going to get you anywhere far in this world. I mean it, like seriously, acting like the smartest kid in the school and probably the best kid in the school and just sitting off to the side and doing your own thing and just like being lonely isn't really going to help you all and I'm sorry but it's true. Sometimes it's better to just blend in with everybody and just try to get used to it all. You obviously won't get used to it from the start, but trust me, if you just stick around for like the first couple of weeks of school, you'll probably be fine and just get to like know everyone a little better, especially if you're in like a school that you've just been to like last year and not just a new school that you're going to. I mean, that's just how I feel personally. Now, does anyone know how to find the square root of 761 and 76? Me. Me. Teacher, teacher, I know the answer! <sighs> yes, nerdy student that always answers all the questions that nobody knows the answers to and always sits by himself in the corner of the classroom? Uh, okay, well, I believe the correct answer is 27.6 of the factor... <laughs> which includes the remainder of... Hey! Ha! Nerd! Why, you big-headed, long-nosed son of a- Hey! How dare you say that to another student? Go to the principal's office right now! But, 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 teacher, he threw a paper ball at me first! I said right now! And I'll be on my way. DETENTION! That just goes to show you how sensitive people can be. Especially teachers. So, yeah, I guess it's probably best for you to not be a nerd and just try to let loose and just be yourself and just try to get used to everything that's going on in the school because, trust me, I've been through pretty much anything that you guys might have been through when you guys were in school. Overall, just don't act like a complete stranger and just be yourself. Don't let anyone get you down or anything. And please try not to be a nerd. Tip number two, don't ignore bullies. 
Ah, <sighs> bullies. Only the worst type of people to ever exist. Aw, oh, man, did people bully me more than they needed to. Seriously, why do people bully each other? Like, we don't do anything wrong to deserve this. And I'm pretty sure with you guys, it's little to no difference at all. Bullies can just kill themselves. Y'all really shouldn't just let people shove you or push you or just call you names or just do that kind of stuff. Not only is it very brutal, but it's just very unnecessary. There's no reason for this world to be filled with all of these bullies. But luckily, what I have to say should really be able to help someone, like I said. Now, of course, if you're just, you know, really basic, you would just do the whole, oh, well, let me just tell a teacher or get away from them as soon as possible. And honestly, where's the fun in that? It's just very lazy and just not really going to help you at all. It's just going to have them want to bully you even more. What I would do is this. Oh, hey, it's the Lord of the Nerds. Oh, man. Not this again. Is Nerdy gonna go home to his mommy so he can get his bottle? Could you please leave me alone? I literally had to spend two hours in detention because of you. And I just want to be left alone. Oh, ow! Damn it! What are you gonna do about that? If the person reaches your limit, you know what to do. <laughs> yes, give them a good old smack or punch in the mouth. In my opinion, I think it's probably best to just stand up for yourself and just don't let others pick on you. Not just from a talking standpoint, but from a fighting standpoint. If they just keep on annoying you, you know what to do. And of course you'd probably say, oh, but we'd get in trouble, we'd get suspended. Well, it's at least better than being a wimp, honestly, because just, what are the teachers going to do? I mean, what they do, they suspend you, and, or just give you detention or something. It's better than being known as a wimp. I mean, I, I of course got into several school fights, and they of course led me to getting detention! And besides, I'm not really too sure that your parents would care about the fact that you got suspended over a school fight, because if... They were my parents, they would of course be somewhat proud of me for standing up to myself and actually getting into a fight. I mean, not obviously not proud of me getting into a fight, but they'd be proud of me for like standing up for myself at that point. So yeah, you can try and just be very original and just tell the teacher that someone's picking on you. But in my opinion, I think it's way better to actually stand up for yourself, talk back, or just fight them if you have to. If they so much as lay one finger on you, you know what to do. Just give it, give them what's coming to them. And of course, I've been bullied so many times, in high school especially. Sometimes it would be annoying, and sometimes I would just be like, uh, don't you guys have some better stuff to do with your time? Like, why are you bothering me? Do you, do you just have no life or anything? I'm looking at you, people in high school who went to the same school as me and picked me on me over and over. They even made fun of my YouTube channel. Tip number three. Do anything you possibly can to cheat on tests, quizzes, and exams. Tests. Exams. And quizzes. Gosh, do I hate them. People say video games rot your brains, but tests are the real things that rot them. And of course, we always try to find ways to cheat on them. I'm of course talking about normal tests, not the ones where you have to just take like on a computer or on your phone or something, because those are obviously easy to look up the answers to, if they're that simple. Because I've actually cheated on a lot of tests. Oh no, I probably shouldn't have said that because the teachers that I had in the past will probably be watching this video. There's of course plenty of ways to cheat on tests. Although, if I may recommend, you probably might want to sit in, like, the back room when you're taking an exam and not, like, anywhere near the front, or at least sit in a spot where there's no teachers around so they can be looking over you and see if you're cheating or not. Heck, I'm pretty sure everyone has did the thing where you would pretend to look at someone else's paper and yet you just do this thing where you cover your eyes so they don't see, like, what that you're looking at them, so you just cover them and just do like that. Yeah, pretty relatable, am I right?
Luckily, as I said before, I do have some suggestions on ways you can cheat on tests. You can try this one where you can hide some secret notes inside of your shoes. Or you can try hiding some behind one of your books. Or you can of course do a very simple one, like writing notes in your hands. Or if you're just taking an online test, you already know what to do. Just look it up on Google. Yeah, that should be pretty obvious. And here's another easy one. Try secretly taking a picture of the test and then asking the teacher if you can go to the bathroom so that way when you're outside, you can look up the answers on Google. But you should probably try your best to be mindful of your surroundings. Otherwise, you'll end up getting... DETENTION! And those were only some of the ideas that I had for cheating on tests because I have way more than that. But I only chose the essential ones. And some of these might not work for the more serious exams, like the SATs and such, so you might only want to try these for the normal tests and quizzes and exams. I mean, you could try it for SATs, but is it really worth it? You tell me. Tip number four. Don't constantly be lending pens or pencils to students. Here's something that should sound very familiar. We've all been through a moment where random students would just ask, Hey dude, do you have a pencil or a pen I can borrow? And if you're kind enough or weird enough, you would of course lend one to them. But, you know, after doing it for several years, I kind of realized it was a huge mistake. Because you're basically spoiling people that should obviously have their own pens and pencils that they should be using. Because for the first time you just give a random student a pencil or a pen. Uh, hey dude. Uh, yeah? Do you have a pencil I can borrow? Uh, fine. Here you go. Thanks. It's gonna be really annoying after the 300th time they ask you. Yo, dude. Hey. <sighs> what? Can I borrow a pencil? No, this is the 500th time you've asked me this year. Get your own. Dude, come on, man. I promise this is the last time, please. I said no! Ugh. Oh! Ouch! So yeah, it's probably best for you to not lend pencils to random strangers you've never seen before. Unless it's a true friend. And yeah, if you just keep on lending people your stuff that you own, then it's just gonna make them wanna ask for it over and over because you're just a way too nice of a person. And it definitely won't help due to the fact that they might keep it and not give it back to you at all. Oh man, I can already hear those people saying that I'm mean and that it's probably best for you to not share with others. Well, for one, we're not in preschool anymore. We don't have to share. And yeah, I guess it's fine for you to let them borrow a pencil like probably once or twice, but if they do it for like 500 times, just drop it. Tip number five, try and bring your own lunch and don't eat the school's lunch. Ah, oh, the cafeteria. Probably the most dangerous place to be at in school. Not only because of the amount of people there, not only because of the random school fights, but the lunch itself, the food, of course. It's terrible. And to this day, I am still amazed that people even bother to eat school lunch. Honestly, I barely remember the last time I even ate school lunch. I think it was probably in like the fourth or fifth grade, I don't know. I now realize, well, for me, School lunch is not that great, and it definitely doesn't taste good. I mean, we have no idea what the servers in the cafeteria even do with the food. Recently, I've just been avoiding the school lunch and just not eating at lunchtime, or just bringing food from home, or just putting a dollar in a vending machine and just eating there. <laughs> I'd rather eat vending machine food than the lunch in the cafeteria. But yeah, if you guys enjoy the school lunch, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to stop you from enjoying what you like. But I don't know, I just recommend bringing in your own lunch. I mean, why eat the school's stupid and boring lunch when you have much better food at home? You never know. They could be trying to poison you with the food, and it could be expired. And of course, eating food is important, so you might as well eat the good stuff. And of course, not the bad stuff. It just works better that way. Heck, I don't even like the pizza that they serve in the cafeteria. Especially the round ones when they're shaped like circles and have a hole in them. Like, what kind of- who would eat that kind of pizza? I mean, I probably sound stupid saying that because 
plenty of people do, but I don't know, that just looks really weird and bizarre. If there's just really one thing I can recommend, try and bring your own lunch to school and don't eat the school lunch because I've had it for years. Sometimes I kind of enjoyed it, but I was like really young by then, so I didn't really see much of a difference. But nowadays I kind of realize how bad it is. The only ever food I remember eating in the cafeteria was probably the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but now I realize those were bad as well. You're better off just making your own peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Please don't eat the school lunch. Please, 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 please. please. Final tip, don't try to be hip or copy what people do to get popular. Do your own thing and be your own you. Let's end off this video with something very important. This last tip may sound a bit obvious, but might as well add my two cents in. So what this one means is that you definitely should not change yourself just to become more knowable and popular in your school. I mean, if you were me, you probably wouldn't mind it so much. But I guess some of us at least want to try to become one of those popular kids, but you probably shouldn't do that. Because of course there's always those popular kids that everyone talks to and just gets a lot of attention from everyone, while we are just those students that just sit at like the side of the corner talking with our other friends but not getting any attention at all. Of course the most basic rule is to be yourself and don't let anybody change you. I mean, just like what I said earlier, where you just have to like try to blend in with the others and n not act like a complete stranger or whatever. But yeah, I mean, you shouldn't do it completely, like right to the point where you have to feel like you need to change yourself just to become popular. Just be yourself. I mean, there's really no reason for anyone to say they are better than anyone else. Because we're all humans. We're equally the same. I mean, not completely. We all have different personalities, but we're all human. And we all equally have our own strengths, so no one can really change us. And of course, I'm going back to my bullying statement because people won't say, I mean, people will obviously say that you're not cool, but do you really have to be cool? Because it all depends on how, on who you are and how you just like change everything. I mean, you can't really change everything that happens in the school when you join it for the first time or just returning after a few months or anything, but it's probably best for you just to be yourself and just not let anyone change you. I mean, if you ask me, those students who, like, are claimed to be the pop most popular kid in the school, there's really no reason for that because no one is popular than anyone else, like I said earlier. They wear, like, chains around their necks, those hoodies, and they always have the hoodie thing on over their head. And apparently that they think that that makes them cool when it just makes them look very weird compared to others. I mean, I guess that's what some students nowadays like to wear when they go to school. Chains, these cool, like, barely cool-looking jackets or whatever, and just something to make them stand out from the rest of the people or whatever. So yeah, even though you don't gain a lot of attention from many of the other st stupid students in the school, just pr just know that you don't have to be like very special or anything to get others' attention. Just do what you like to do. And yeah, it is a very generic and original thing to say, but it's true. I mean, heck, there has to be at least one student in the school that you go to that has some similar interest as you. I've heard this line from somewhere, but I don't exactly remember, but... It said you only need, you. I mean, you at least need one friend to get by in this world. And I couldn't have said it better myself, really. Yeah, back to my dress code statement. You guys definitely don't want to go all the way just to dress up like how the popular students do. I mean, they really think just because of what they wear, it's really going to get them to be like the most famous people in the world. And obviously that's not true. Ugh, especially those weirdos who have their pants slightly down and showing their undergarments that nobody wants to see. Huh, how do you guys like this? <laughs> Ugh, can you please pull your pants up, you stupid freak? No one wants to see your undies. <laughs> and don't wear any of those weird stuff like tank tops, tube tops, or... Spaghetti tops. <laughs> I hope whoever came up with the name for these clothes got fired afterwards. You just, you know, wear normal clothes like shorts, jeans, or sweatpants. 
and of course a t-shirt, a normal one. Of course not just regular t-shirts, just, you know, the regular boring ones. You can of course wear t-shirts that have cool designs on them. Students should be allowed to wear hoodies and wear it over their heads if they want to. I'm sorry, what was that? There's really no reason for teachers to judge students for that, or for anything that they wear, really. I'm sorry, what was that? Or maybe they should. <laughs> In conclusion, you don't have to change yourself just to become a popular student. It's probably best for you not to be popular in essence. Whew, I certainly said a lot in this video. But yeah, I at least hope some of my tips that I've given you all help in some ways. You know, I think it actually feels kind of good to give some advice this time around because of course recently I graduated high school and now I'm going to move on to bigger and probably maybe better things. But yeah, I just want to at least give some people advice so they don't, they of course don't suffer as much as I did. So to end off this video, I might as well say something very original. Just do your best and try not to get in trouble. And of course, study and complete your homework like anyone's really going to care that much to do them. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I got for you guys today in this video. So thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Extra tip. Don't use a locker. Yeah, this may be something random, but I kind of recommend not to use a locker. And yeah, maybe it's because I'm just so used to carrying my books in my book bag all the time. Because back when I was in middle school, we did not have any lockers until I went to high school. And I eventually did come close to you trying to use a locker to put some of my stuff in. But sometimes it just really doesn't work because sometimes I would just forget that I didn't have the books I was going to need in my backpack that I forgot them in my locker. So yeah, I guess it's probably because I'm just so used to carrying my books in my book bag and not putting them somewhere else. Because so yeah, probably don't, don't want to forget anything really. And I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be a pain having to get your locker to close even though you have a lot of stuff in it. But you just want to close it so bad but it just won't budge. I mean, I can't even get my closet door to close because I have so much stuff in there as well. See? And it's really best for you not to use a locker because you definitely don't want to risk someone managing to sneak in there and stealing your stuff. I mean, I know it could probably hurt your back, but I don't know. Try to at least carry some of the stuff you need, most of the stuff you need in your bag most of the time. And of course, don't leave anything valuable or important in lockers when you use them, even though I recommend not to use them. But yeah, that's all for real this time. Bye.